Buonasera a tutti. I, I'm convinced Liban Youssef, he just waits for us to post so he could be the first one there. I think he's won the competition against Facebook prank. But shout out to Liban Youssef. That he, I think he's been there since uh, day one. What's happening, Anthony? We have uh, EC Sergio, Nathan, Orlando, uh, Kim, Phil Pichon. Guys, welcome. And uh, yes, we heard the feedback. Guys, we will introduce timestamps so you guys could after... The video you can go directly to the part that you want and if not you just listen to the whole thing stevie p siamo pronti yes sir let's go let's go welcome to the milan weekly podcast the english voice of milan fans all over the world with your hosts Vinny t and stevie p Leao carica il Mancino! Eccolo qua! Rafa Leao! Il Milan è campione d'Italia! Cari amici sportivi, welcome yet to another edition of the Milan Wiki Podcast, episode 247 to be exact. Here we talk everything Milan, a... Uh, Brahim the Dream and Robo Rebic, uh, Milan, and uh, where we have the referees in our pockets, uh, Milan. Stevie P, Vinny T, uh, great start to the Serie A uh, weekend. We got together, you and I, to watch the game. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to ask you, before we get into all of this, um, I know I, I, did, uh, I did a poll this weekend talking about which fan base would have, you know, the most the fans saying that the referees are against them. Uh, and Roma just edg ed edging us out. But Steve, you had another poll that you, this beautiful Sunday morning, you woke up and watched the best league in the world if you needed some help. But uh, how was your Fubo TV experience watching Nottingham Forest? Who did they play? I think they won uh, their first Nottingham game. Forest, West Ham. Good game. West Ham. Good game. Good game. And then uh, we're able to watch a bit of uh, that. But uh, in the end, Serie A is back, Steve. Uh, glad to see you there on uh, Saturday. But... Uh, you know, President, he's got to do us the housekeeping stuff before we get into it. And uh, we're going to get in, into the game very, very soon. Uh, but uh, Stevie P, before we get into this uh, housekeeping stuff, right, we do have something to announce uh, before we get into um, the Milan Club of Montreal. But uh, Fubo TV, we're doing another giveaway, guys. Uh, on Twitter, just like uh, and uh, retweet that tweet, like both pages. On Facebook, you got to tag a friend, but three free months. And, you know, we didn't show our words last year, Steve. Maybe not the best of experience with Football TV, but so far, so good uh, from what I've seen from the EPL and uh, from uh, Serie A. So give those, uh, if you guys want to win a three-month uh, free subscription, $30 for three months or uh, $10. Um, no, I think they have a deal when you do the whole year, but they do have... Serie A, they have the EPL. Am I not mistaken, Steve? Did I see the French League? Or I think it was French the French League is there too, yeah. The French League is there too. So take a look, guys, and uh, see if you can win yourself three months. Uh, other my <clears throat> other housekeeping, we were maybe 10, 12, maybe on a Saturday at 12 o'clock, maybe not, not the biggest of uh, biggest of crowds. We are expecting a lot more people this coming Sunday. Atalanta, 245 on a Sunday. Returning members, $25.00. New members at fifty dollars with a brat, with a uh, scarf. You know you do get your discounts. Uh, we will be giving away uh, some prizes uh, too on selective games. And uh, Steve, President is opening up uh, the bank account. Three lucky members will win a retro 1995-1996 retro jersey. So raffling off uh, one home, one away, and one third uh, kit. First winner chooses which one they want. Then the second winner and third winner gets whichever kit is left. Thank you, President. Those are the way the, the, the calculations are. But hoping to see a lot of you guys on uh, next Sunday and the weeks uh, to come. But uh, great seeing uh, a couple of newbies, Steve, and even the old men. He was wearing his proud uh, T-shirt that he won from Milan uh, Club World. Love to see it. And then there was that little man that he never says a word, but then he was swearing and yelling. So you got to love it. The back of Serie A is back. 
Seri is back. Um, on uh, that note, uh, to shout out to Daniel, brand new, uh, brand new Patreon uh, member. Um, I think that's about it uh, for housekeeping. Steve, can you think of anything? No, let's get to the games. All right. So thank you to Presidente to make us because Sonny's still missing in action. He said he's coming back, uh, he's coming back soon. But um, Steve, I wanted to do something different because some of the questions that we do have from uh, Patreon sometimes do uh, involve the game. So I want to get a couple of the comments and it's going to get us to talk about the uh, the, the game itself. And I want to first go to Youssef because he was actually there. Our friend uh, Youssef, we call him our Patreon Tom Selleck with that beautiful mustache of his. Hello, guys. Great atmosphere at San Siro with Rebic winning the Man of the Match award. Would you keep him as the starting striker against Atlanta? Plus, ironically, three out of the four goals came from the right side. Do we need to add player on that side? And he says one more thing. For me, Diaz was the man of the match as he was directly involved in all four goals, including the second where he played a key pass out wide uh, to Calabria, who was... Uh, who was your best performer? And then Nicholas saying, not really a question, but Messias was poor, wasn't he? I can't deal with this whole season. Give me a fucking right wing. So I wanted to start with it because saying like, you know, three goals out of the four coming from the right side. Uh, I know at one point, me and you, uh, we were arguing that, you know, uh, on that goal, I said, but that was all uh, Messias and you were not picking at all the mistakes that he was making. Um, but what do you say from what we've seen so far, especially from that right side, Diaz, Rebic, man of the match, uh, what say you to Yusuf's, uh, Yusuf's comments? Messias is just not good enough, guys. And then we're not gonna just beat around. We're not gonna beat the beat the subject so much this year. Uh, it, that's my thoughts. I'm gonna stick with it. He's just not good enough. Uh, look, Brahim Diaz had a good game. It's fine. Let's see if we can get some consistency out of him. But uh, I think. Uh, I think there's there's not a lot that we can tell from game one. Uh, look, it was exciting, great game, uh, amazing that Yusuf was there. Uh, crazy experience. Again, it's hard. Yeah, it's a seventy thousand jam pack. That's what Serie A needs. That's what they need to show. That's what they need to uh, publicize. And uh, and we move on, right? There's not much we can say from game one, right? So, it, it, but. <clears throat> Let me ask you this: When we went down a minute in, right? Were you worried at all? Because I, I, I got a lot of, uh, uh, I got a lot of um, people that write online. It's like they weren't worried at all. I just, I, I wasn't worried. I just said, like, obviously we have to start the season this way here. But uh, how did you take that first goal from Rodrigo Becal? A little bit, a uh, little bit pissed off about that. I think uh, the guys had to. Usually, once you have a sellout crowd and you're playing at home. Uh, even in a regular season starter, you want to ride the wave of the fans as that 13th man and, and use them to, to your advantage. I don't think Milan did that. I think they came out a little bit sloppy and we got scored on. But uh, this team has showed in the past, uh, especially last year, that uh, if they go down or they get you know, scored on pretty early in the game, it, it's better earlier on in the game then later on in the game, obviously, and there was time for them to come back and get things organized. But uh, I was a little bit pissed off about that. To say worried, no, because it was very early. But just the way we surrendered that goal and cheap, a cheap goal on uh, on a corner kick where everybody was standing around, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit nerve wracking and a little bit. Uh, anno- I'm, I was annoyed, not not uh, not nervous, but annoyed. Annoyed. Um, you know, a lot of talk about uh, man of the match. Would it be Red Bitch? Would it be Diaz? But Steve, can we give a shout out to the Pitbull Benesa? It, it like I, I didn't pay. Like I saw that he had a fantastic game, but somebody put up even uh, a little highlight. But um, who would be your man of the match? I, I just found Benesa played a fantastic game. Tonali on the sidelines had to uh, direct traffic. Who is your man of the match? I'm going to give the man of the match to Rebic just because he really had a subpar year last year, uh, even more so than uh, Brian Diaz. So you could just imagine how bad his year was last year, uh, combined with injury and uh, just low confidence. So him coming out, and in the preseason we saw already, he looked like he had legs again. He looked like he was interested. He looked like he was involved. He was pressing. He was uh, he was causing trouble. 
And I think him playing that kind of false nine uh, is not my favorite position to see him in, but he's never going to take back that left wing because it belongs to Leal. And uh, I was just happy for him because, you know, it was a, a really tough season for him. And to come out game one, 70,000 people play a position that he's not the best at, but seems to be, you know, annoying enough so that Pioli trusts him to, to, to play up there and score two goals where, you know, he's in the right place at the right time, causing trouble and, you know, putting the ball in the back of the net. I, I can't give it to anybody else but him. How about the flop, Steve, for you? Is it easy to go to Leal because we expect so much from him? I don't find he had the greatest of uh, games no. or do you have a specific uh, uh, Leal flop? is coming off a fantastic season. Uh, you're going to have a lot more attention that you than you had last year. I think he's going to have to just get used to it. He's going to have to have uh, a little bit more fantasia in, in the way he's getting involved in the games. And I think Pioli is going to have to move him around. That means whoever is playing on right wing is going to be uh, is going to have to be able to move to left wing. That's what I would do with Leao. I would move him around the park. You saw a bit against Udine. He was a little bit more central at times. Mm -hmm. But uh, look, this is the price that he's going to pay for being someone who's up and coming and has a shitload of talent. And the teams now are going to uh, you know really pay close attention to Leao, and they believe. And I think Udine believed that if they took Leao out of the game, that Milan had a lesser chance of winning the game. And in theory, they're right. But Milan showed a lot of character, especially guys like Diaz, uh, you know, Rebic, Benacer, even Theo Hernandez. Uh, I think he played a decent game. You know, it showed that we have a lot more weapons, right? And mm -hmm. last year against a team like Udine that really sit back they play this very low block that it's hard for us to break down. We unfortunately gave it to them and, and made them stretch out more than they'd like to. Milan was stretched out as well. You know, uh, we saw Kalulu with a great uh, defensive uh, defensive block on uh, De Lufeo. Yeah. But uh, now we see this Milan take it to another level in terms of have different points of attack except, and... I think teams are going to have to adjust that it's not always just Leao now. It's it's going to be everybody. So you saw the introduction of the players, uh, the new signings. This Milan is going to show that they have a lot of weapons. And this is going to be something that teams are going to have to get used to again. To Geos, because I want to talk to you about it. Keep up the great work, guys. Finally, Calcio is back. I was happy we got the three points, but uh, La Masia got to go do better or else I will be buying the costco size Tums every week. Thoughts on the pen for me? It didn't seem like it, but hearing other fan bases cry made me love it. Tears of joy. Now, I wanted to describe when the penalty came. Like, you know, we saw the play, and then we're all looking at each other like they're going to VAR for this. And we're looking at the replay. I'm like, but what are they looking at? Uh, to me, it didn't seem like a penalty at all. And <clears throat> they go look at it. Okay. They come back with the penalty. Uh, another, you know, let's not talk about the Sampdoria game. I don't know if you saw that penalty. They awarded that they still went to VAR. Even today, Juventus, I don't know that first penalty they gave to Vlaovic. I didn't understand how that was a penalty. Are we becoming too soft, Steve? Or where? what do you think the thinking was behind awarding that penalty? Because he, he I don't know, to me, it's not like he had a clear chance on goal. He whiffed on the ball and then he came in. Is it because of the tackle? Is it because? I have no idea. I don't know what they're, what they're calling anymore. Uh, I, I turned around and I said to you, that's not a penalty shot. That's just Calabria missing an open net. And nobody, and, nobody cheered, huh? And the, like nobody, the the owner was trying no, to make because fun of people us. people have some sense of uh, of the game and understand that what's a penalty and what used to be a penalty. Look, is it ever going to be perfect? We're not going to sit here and say it's going to be perfect. But my indigestion of the week right away, you know, sixteen minutes in is a VAR and again the inconsistencies. Uh, I watched a lot of EPL this weekend, and I saw the way they go to VAR or not go to VAR. Uh, and I think they have it 
better than we do for the time being. Uh, but that was just inevitable with the dinosaur technology that uh, Serie A is using. It's just the inconsistency of the refs, right? Like, uh, if you don't get an explanation and you leave the newspapers and people like us even, let's, let's be honest, people like us uh, trying to explain what we saw, there's always going to be uh, that favoritism and that leaning in towards a certain direction. For me, it was really soft. It was not a penalty. I'm not going to sit here and say, yay, we got a penalty. Will I take it? Well, look, we have no choice. We're going to take it. And, you know, it, it did change the game. But there's a lot of garbage in the game now, and it's stuff that I don't like because, you know, did we – deserve that penalty at that point i don't think so no but you know what i try to focus on is that calabria can't be missing open nets either no uh, a lot of comments uh, there you know calabria didn't whiff on the ball uh would have been tackled just as badly dangerous play mark uh, from you know, boston saying you know if it would happen in the middle of the pitch it would have been a foul i could get it from that side but to me you know then you had the outrage, the outrage, Steve, and I See, love that. No, I mean, but people who justify it that if, if it would happen in the middle of the field, the defender's job is to keep the ball out of the net. In the middle of the field, there's no net for him to keep the ball out of. And you're going to make a lunge. You're going to lunge towards plays like that. You know, there was one in the, uh, uh, again, uh, just going to bring it up because it was there. There was one in the Nottingham Forest one where the player put himself in front of the ball. He did extend his arm to block the ball. What he didn't know is that this goaler was right behind him. Hmm. So they took a penalty for absolutely no reason. But can you blame the guy? That guy there, uh, the Udine defender, is putting himself in a position to block the ball. It's not his fault Calabria crumbled. He crumbled. Hmm. No one touched him. He didn't. No one. No one made him fall. Do, do you just, think maybe because he of the, the ball? He maybe missed the, the ball. But the maybe the lateness of the tackle. I would just like you know the, how. Then you're gonna this. call. Then you're gonna call fifty penalties a game, guys. If that's what you want, then in a couple of weeks from now, we better not start crying because penalties are gonna come our way. Exactly the same thing. No, that I'm just happened. trying. I'm with you. I'm just no, trying to understand I'm just saying, what they saw. People are saying that they're making themselves find an excuse why this was a good penalty. Not and I don't point. care about the newspapers or where it is on the pitch. If you want football, soccer to be soft and you want your league to be made fun of, continue finding reasons why these penalties make sense. What's worse than that is the Sandoria game at Atalanta. VAR took away a goal from Caputo for absolutely no reason. And you see that penalty they gave. I don't understand what that was. So, where... like, guys, I get it. That it's in favor of us. It's in favor of Milan. And you can sit and you can be happy. Fine. I, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I'm not going to sit here and be happy about things like that because I'm going to be really pissed off when a soft penalty like that comes against me. I think Fuji's in fine. I only think that if it was the other way around, I would be annoyed but understand why the penalty is awarded. It wasn't a good one, but it's still a penalty. Um you know, people freaking out online, and then obviously Jan comes back and you know says to people, "Yeah, it's our first penalty in eight months. We were like seventh in penalties last year." People like to talk, and it is, and it is, it is what it is online. But in the end, you know, did we need it? Absolutely not. It happened. It happened, right? And uh, uh, it just, it just, um, no pens, but seeing the rivals cry about it, we'll complain. Um. In the end, Steve, this kind of performance, um, we're taking on Atalanta uh, on uh, on Sunday. Uh, much different. Let's not, not 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 take them lightly, right, Steve? Because even though they've missed, um, I'm missing a lot of key players, or you know, left in the summer, it's still Atalanta. Um, it's still Gasparini. I know we had their number last year, but um, we need to maybe close on more on the defense, especially with these uh, set plays. Yeah, they won't be able to get away with uh, getting down 1-0 and coming back. I don't think Atalanta is that disorganized because, let's face it, in the Nudine game, uh, in the second half, if the two defenders don't decide to play double-A soccer for uh, a split second there, at the four, you know, Brain Diaz is not getting that, that, that goal that puts us ahead again. And, 
Udine is a type of team that, again, is always a ball buster. I saw in the comments, and I agree 100%. Atalanta is more uh, of a team that, you know, they beat you by organization. They beat you by the way Gasparini gets them prepared to play a team like Milan. I do think that they, they you know, they have signed some players, but for Atalanta, uh, for Atalanta, it's more how healthy they stay, right? And, you know, I, I see... You know, Atalanta, for some reason, having trouble finding Zapata and Muriel on the field at the same time. I don't know why, but that's Gasparini. Uh, you know, Atalanta is always those wing backs that cause problems. So both uh, Calabria and uh, Theo Hernandez are going to be very busy. And when they're very busy, we count on the left wing and right wing to, 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 to add a little bit of support in the middle of the park. We'll see. Uh, you know, Kroonich, Benacer wasn't the best couple. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on Jim Brunich all the time, but there's no gelling because he's not going to play there forever. Uh, it's we are missing someone in the center of the pitch to control the game. And when Ben Asser is running around recuperating balls, he's falling in the same footsteps of what we had or what we started to expect from Kessie, where he would be recuperating balls and distributing balls at the same time. Look, I think he has the talent for it. I don't think he has the legs to do this over 38 games. So we need Tonali back. I don't know if he'll be back against Atalanta. But now it's, you know, there's a couple of days left. Will they find the solution as some some uh, some more depth in the middle of the park? I don't know. But uh, Krunic won't won't be the one that's going to save us on, uh, on the long term if something were to happen. It was not only... Milan's first game. It was the first week of Serie A, Steve. And uh, Presidente got us a slide ready. I don't know if you have the uh, audio effects uh, ready, but uh, taking a look at the rest of the games in Serie A, Steve, first, let's look at the uh, on the left. Uh, on the left, let's uh, Atalanta, Sampdoria. Um, I... There it is. That was for, for Liban Youssef. You spoke a little bit about the Sampdoria Atalanta. I don't know if you wanted to touch more on, on uh, that game there. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to see it. It was at the same time as Milan and uh, and Udine, but uh, saw uh, the extended highlights from Serie A. Uh, look, Atalanta did go down to that Caputo goal that was taken back, and then uh, once they they took the lead. You know, you feel bad for teams like Sampdoria because taking the lead one nothing against Atalanta does change things, and especially game one of the season. And to have that, uh, to have that happen to to Sampdoria at home, especially where they need a lot of points. Look, I think it was unfair, but again, at the end, Atalanta did what uh, they usually do, and they find themselves uh, getting the three points, scrappy as hell. So we're gonna expect a very scrappy match next weekend. I know you watched this one. I certainly did. Inter Lecce. Um, I don't know, Steve. Uh, it, it's it's the first game. They shouldn't be worried. But if you're looking at the result of, of the of the preseason, <clears throat> 95th minute goal against uh, Lecce, pulling out the three points. Do Interistis have anything to worry about? Absolutely not. Lecce was terrible. The only thing that held back Inter in this game was the potato patch of a field that Lecce presented themselves with. It was pretty disgusting. Absolutely embarrassing. Serie A needs to get their shit in order, guys. You know, watching, again, uh, different EPL games. Their fields are pristine. Uh, yes, I know they make, they do some magic with, uh, with the cameras and the coloring and so on and so forth. But, guys... It's, it's it was embarrassing. Yeah. Indigestion number two. That's again to Serie A. It's you cannot have a team that comes up from Serie A B to Serie A game one, guys. Game one. Hmm. Don't tell me there's a hundred thousand people that played on that game on that field. That's pretty. Like, come uh, on, you can't get your field in order. Game one, you're Lecce. You're gonna be on on uh, for them. It's national TV against Inter. Back in Serie A. And you present yourself with a potato patch. Hey, 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 come on. Hey, hey, this was... is ridiculous, guys. This is It's disgusting. And again, Inter, were they dominant? No, absolutely not. 
but Lecce really didn't do much till they got the equalizer. Uh, and then Lecce's keeper, I think, made some really quality saves. And then at the end, they just, uh, again, this is what championships are. Finding sides. ways to win. Yeah, they find ugly ways to win. And we got to see ugly uh, Simone and Zaghi run down the field uh, with his uh, very sweaty uh, shirt. I don't know why these people are wearing shirts in 40-degree uh, weather, especially white shirts. Uh, so that's a fashion taboo uh, for me. But uh, again, I think, again, Inter, the game changed when uh, Dumb Fries came on. Uh, fries. Yeah, uh, I don't know why he didn't start. But that's, again, that's Inter's problems. And again, I think Lukaku looked strong, uh, looked a little bit tired. So he's going to have to get back into shape. But again, not a lot of stuff that you can tell after game one. But I'm if, if I was an Inter fan, ugh, disgusting. Uh, no, I would have nothing to worry about. Uh, somebody pointed out, yeah, no ties for it because you know, Steve. Remember, we're the, the we're a, a farmers league. We're very boring. We don't score a lot 50, of goals. First time in fifty-one years. Wow, and you know we don't score a lot of goals in Serie A. But uh, Tomons and Cremonese, you know. Pulling up a fight uh, against, I don't know if you watched any of them. I caught a bit of uh, Fiorentina and Cremonese exciting back and forth with uh, with the goals. But did you catch any of those? Uh, I was watching the Fiorentina one a little bit. Yes, uh, I, I I think the like the Cremonese, especially game one, that's their uh, you know that's their game to get into it to 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 catch maybe a team like Fiorentina a little bit uh, a little bit asleep at the wheel. And uh, I think they did that. And uh, Fiorentina were, needed to to have a very uh, organized fashion to get back into the game. I think Jovic was strong. Uh, I think at the he's same one time. of those. He's one of those guys that, if he stays healthy, will be a very good signing for Fiorentina. Uh, also, having my Fanta Calcio, so that that helped me. We're getting and, there. We're getting yeah. there. And. Uh, Again, the Serie A B teams coming up, you know, the Monza, the Lecce, the Cremonese, this is what you want them to do. That There's going to be a lot of fight. The seven sisters this year are going to be very strong. And I don't know how many points are going to be separating first from fifth this time, this time around. But, uh, again, match day one, I can't repeat it so many times. There's not a lot that you can get from that. It's a very long season. But if this is what's store for Serie A, hey, I'll take it. Lazio Bologna, yes, I mentioned that was crazy. Red cards, uh, Lazio pulling off the win. Uh, and a, um, for me, it's just a little, um, it, it's kind of a, not an indigestion, it's more of a brioche, but it's like I love the seeing Mialovic back, but he looked, you know, in one way, I'm like, he looks frail, he doesn't look like the same kind of person, but he's there, right? So he's there. He's back at it. I know they sent a nice message there to that uh, gentleman, uh, David. On, on uh, And, you know, for Mialovic, I prefer seeing him in this way, not to see him at all. But uh, did you catch uh, Lazio and Bologna? Yes. Completely disorganized game. How so? so? Lazio was a disaster and Bologna was a disaster. Both. Uh, Lazio with the red card, I get it, doesn't help you. But I don't want to see any compilations of this game because it was a disaster. By the way, Two Vinny, teams very, very disorganized. It's not a brioche. It's a brioche. It's okay. He's Winnipeg Italian. It's okay, Vinny. It's okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Uh, disorganization. I, I, I know who got the red card first. I think it was Lazio that got the red yeah. card. And Bologna the got the, the Brand keeper. Brand new keeper. Brand new keeper. And he touched the ball outside the box. Which, Fanta Calcio nightmare. Uh, Le Campioni d'Agosto, Steve. Squeeze the one out uh, against uh, Salernitana. Uh, they looked, I watched a bit of the first half, they looked good, and it's like, I'm like, but how's this game just finishing one nothing? But, um, how did you, uh, how did you see the Campione di Agosto? I think Roma looked good. I don't think Salernitana was ever in the game. It's just mm -hmm. Roma couldn't score, hit the post, uh, just wide, just, uh, Getting their getting their stuff to getting themselves organized in the final third is going to be a little uh, very key for them. They, they had a couple of nice link ups: Tammy Abraham, D Dybala, and Zaniolo. Uh, once again, for Roma, it's them staying healthy. 
And uh, again, you see Mourinho passing the message. He changed all the strikers for uh, midfielders. Hmm. And uh, he needs someone else, right? So the, the, he's passing the Belotti message to the owners that he needs someone else to, uh, to take uh, Abraham's place when he needs to give him a rest. Or any, or any one of those three arrests. So, uh, I, if I'm a Roma fan, I would have, I would be a little bit disappointed that it didn't finish more than one, one nil. But uh, in the end, uh, you know, it's a good away win to start off the season. Clean sheet. Let's move on and let's go. Especially, uh, I did not watch this, uh, Steve. Uh, did you? No, I did not. Today, Verona Napoli. Wow, a lot of back and forth. Uh, Verona going up, uh, Napoli tying. Then at the end of uh, at the end of the the, the, the first half, two one. Verona come back two two, and, and then they just blew the game over. Um, is this as well like you're saying? It is the first game, but Napoli. A lot of a lot of people were putting, you know, shoving them aside of the top four. But it is Verona. But uh, what do you take from this game? I don't know if you were working, if you were able to catch a little bit. Yeah, I was able to watch this one. And again, and they did. Napoli did look impressive. Again, I'm still not convinced that they did enough uh, to replace the players that they lost. Everybody's going to try to sell you their brand spanking new car all the time and what they got. Uh, I think Labotka was very, very good. Um the new guy, which I'm not going to pronounce his name, was very, uh, very involved. Oshiman is Oshiman. Double and, K. Yeah, double K. And I think you saw where Naples will struggle, and that's, I think, on the defensive part of the game. There's not a lot of times that you're going to go down 2-1 or 2-0 and come back and score five goals, right? So, uh, Or four goals, for that matter. But, you, again... Very yeah. hard to 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 judge right now, but from last week where I said that I think Napoli didn't do enough, I'm still sticking with that. I understand they scored five goals, but uh, same way it's game one for Napoli, it's also game one for Verona. So I think they need to fix some things in the back as well because uh, that didn't look good either. Last but not least, Juventus coming up with a 3 0 win. Uh, surprising, I wasn't expecting this many goals, but the uh, game opened up as soon as uh, Di Maria scored. <laughs> we got to fix that soundboard. We could barely hear it. Uh, the the um... surprising Juventus, no, I, I knew that, you know, I had a feeling they were going to win, but um, everybody's, you know, thinking about Di Maria oh wow what a player and Vlaovic actually like you know getting some service uh what is it going to look like when Keza comes back um did you watch this one a little bit uh, too Steve and yeah did it look like Allegri ball was able to watch this one and I think Di Maria was a good uh, a good addition to to Juve uh, again I know a lot of people made uh, made fun of the age and the limited minutes at the uh, uh, Paddy dollar sign Saint Germain but uh, you see the quality of Di Maria. You know, he scored a goal. Was it luck? Was it uh, was it talent? We'll leave it to uh, we don't know. Did, is he really hurt? I uh, saw so Allegri said it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. He's worried. not worried, but he got uh, he got uh, subbed off, injured. So yeah. uh, and that doesn't look good for him as well. You know, I think Vlaovic is going to have a good year. Uh, a lot of uh, I saw a tweet today that there's just seven players left remaining from uh, what they uh, what they had. Uh, in terms of uh, past Juventini, so longevity is 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 going down. But Juve's back line is where the problem is going to be. I think uh, Kellini, uh, sorry, uh, the loss of Kellini just for leadership, not for the, the not for age, because he was getting a little bit long into the, in in the age category. But uh, Bonucci and Bremner, we'll see. <sighs> Juve's backs are terrible. You know, Danilo, Alexandro, everybody's going to say, oh, they're good, they're good, they're good. They're not good. And uh, their midfield is also something that's going to need uh, some help. We saw the new signing, Kostic, there uh, from uh, mm -hmm. from Frankfurt, Reinhardt. So uh, we'll see. Uh, he came on in the end. In, in track Frankfurt. Yeah, whatever it's called. We'll see what he, uh, you know, even them, the the next thirty year old, they're selling it like as if they signed the, uh, they signed the uh, Friday uh, 
Burkamp, Dennis Burkamp, that's going to be delivering all kinds of crosses there to uh, their Van Basten Vlaovic. So uh, it's always that. The uh, Juventini, if they would sign a piece of shit, that would be the best piece of shit out there. There would be uh-huh. no piece of shit like that piece of shit. Gotcha. So that's typical Juventini. That's what they do. Uh, and we'll they're see, back. Right? Didn't you hear? Didn't you hear Twitter? They're back. Yeah, they're back. You know, I, I, I was just, I was a little bit disappointed in Sassuolo. I thought they would put up more of a fight. Mm, yeah. I didn't think that they would come out uh, that flat. They, it, they seemed the teams, okay after the, after the first goal. It just, I don't know. They just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? I also I watching that West Ham game. I saw Skamaka come in at the 70th minute. So you're telling me Skamaka left Serie a to go to West Ham to play two a total of 20 minutes in two games? Got paid. It's not all about the money, guys. Sometimes it's not always about the money. Speaking of uh, Fanta Calcio, Steve, you know, I did pull up. You know, if I was able to log in and the private in the city of fantasy.com, you guys could still join. You're just not going to get the points of the first week, just like I. Steve, so explain me something. How is it that you were telling me on Saturday that, oh my God, my goalie is the Udinese goalie? I was stuck. This is fantastic for my Fanta Calcio. I'm going to lose. You know, I'm not going to make. How did you make third, third spot here? Yeah, so this is the Milan Weekly Podcast League. So let's let's get it out there. It's not. Uh, I have another league with Jan and uh, a whole bunch of other guys in uh, in another Fantacalcio uh, site there. So that's why you're getting things mixed up. But this the Serie A fantasy guys is is really fun. It's very easy. It's it's something that anybody could do. You don't have to be the uh, know all of all of all soccer here of all Serie A. Uh, you know, a couple of rules. You can't pick uh, everybody from Inter or everybody from Lazio. That's uh, number one. Number two, uh, you have a limited amount of coins. That's the translation for money in, the, in terms of their cap. And you join the Milan Weekly uh, Podcast League, which has 310 members strong, guys. That's per- that's pretty big for a league. It's free to play. Milan Weekly Podcast, guys, let's make it clear. So that everybody doesn't freak out and we don't have a customer service problem issue at the end. Milan Weekly Podcast will have prizes. We're hoping to have, for our league, for the Milan Weekly Podcast League, we're hoping to have one Campione d'Inverno. I always wanted to give out a prize for Campione d'Inverno. I hope it's a Roma fan that gets it. That would be the best. And, you know, at the end of the year, of course, a prize for the winner of the Milan Weekly Podcast League. But the league itself, Serie A Fantasy, which you should follow them on Twitter and on Facebook, they have their own, you know, stat calculation and, and the prizes that they're going to be giving away from, you know, PS5s to, you know, uh, AirPods to it's a MacBook, uh, Pro. MacBook Pro. They have fa- fantastic prizes that, look, guys, if you're lucky one week and you're, because it's about luck, you could, there is some strategy, but there's a lot of luck. And the points totals, you know, you 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 have to see where you want to gamble. I gambled high up. My forwards, I took forwards. I would think we're gonna. You can click and go into the team, and you'll let see me, my team. Let me see this uh, Stevie P. Let me see. So, so here, hold on. I think I gotta make this bigger. What do you what do you have here, Steve? You had the Lukaku, Vlaovic, Jovic, Pellegrini, Lobotka, Leao, Di Maria. Singo, Gosens, Hadabur, and uh, Musso as a as a goal. But uh, this got you 110 points, and the best the best of the week had 134. That's yeah. uh, that's not bad at all. 134 in the uh, in Serie A's fantasy league itself, the collection of all the leagues and and all their members and all their uh, subscribers. Uh, 113 puts me 110 puts me third place in the Milan Weekly Podcast League. So, uh, yeah, so it's again, it's 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 you need to gamble where you want to go, what you want to do. Uh, and you you have the ability to to be able to, you know, choose the players that you want. You have transfers if, you know, uh, one you have an injury. Let's say that we have Di Maria and next week 
I don't have Di Maria because he's injured. I can make a transfer. I could decide to put him on my bench. I have those options. There's a wild card option too. What's great is the site is smart enough to know that if your player who you've started for some reason, which you should know, is not starting, but you have someone on the bench who has started, they will automatically put that player in his place. So uh, very cool. Serie A Fantasy. Check them out, guys. Uh, you know, join the Milan Weekly, Weekly Podcast League, but it's also a great thing to do with your friends. You, you make fun of everybody. You know, we have uh, Mario from G2K Vapes. You know, he, he wrote in the chat he got 44 points. You have to be really, really sad to get 44 points in, in Fanta Calcio when you're how, choosing your team. How's uh, how did the president do, uh, Liban, wants to know? And congratulations to describe Milan, uh, your uh, your. PlayStation 6 is on its way from the president is the uh, UPS uh, carrier uh, from the Pony Express. But uh, Steve, uh, how's president? Did he do any good? Did you check his uh, scores? President, you know, guys, uh, he 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 did pretty well. He was very proud of himself. Oh, I lost my earphones. That's how bad it was. So that's how good he... he was. He was proud of himself. I have his uh, score here, guys. I obviously I needed to I needed to understand what he got right so he was okay. very happy and uh, you know guys i got 79 points that's amazing that's amazing guys uh, wow i didn't know i was gonna get the 79 points boom then i show him the screenshot of 110 and stevie p the vp is in third place seria fantasy guys check it out we'll be doing this every week and checking out you know uh this week because i'm third we obviously checked out my team but uh, in the weeks to come, we'll check out who was in first place and what they had in terms of players uh, that got them that uh, tally of points. So let's go. And uh, there we go. Uh, so let's uh, go through the questions and we'll do the busted uh, tweets. Uh, let's start off with uh, uh, Fabio saying, hey, fellas, Diaz had a good performance. Do we think this is something he can maintain throughout the season? Last year, he had a good run of form from the first month before falling off. Do we think the amount of competition for that cam spot will finally elevate his game? All the best for Milan. Only time will tell, Steve, but this could be a good problem to have, correct? Yeah, uh, I think it's a good problem to have. I'm just not convinced in his consistency. Mm, and, even... you know, seeing the Kettleman come on, uh, I was very impressed in how poised he was. I was very impressed. It's easy, you know, I'm not going to say it's easy to come into a new league, but he made it look easy. He, I think he was comfortable on the ball. He was asking for the ball. Uh, was he perfect? No. But, uh, you know, the commentator said it right. He looks, he's sneaky fast. Hmm. You would look at him and you wouldn't think he's fast, but he's also fast. And, you know, Brahim Diaz is someone who holds the ball a lot. And sometimes that's what gets him into trouble. Uh, he, you know, Anthony Lafleur is hitting the hammer right on the nail. For De Ketelman, his passing accuracy was fantastic. The range was fantastic. You know, for someone like Diaz, holding on to the ball that split second too much, lands him on the floor, lands him, you know, with uh, with just an option that was there that's no longer there. It's It's that fast. And I think that if he gets better at that, I think he will he will continue to to be successful, Brahim Diaz. But in the long run, guys, what we saw with CDK, and again, I, I it's very rare I get riled up and I get hyped by guys like this. And again, I want to manage everybody's expectation. It's game one. I was just pleasantly surprised at how easy he made his intro look. His intro debut. to the game, yeah. I just he just didn't look like someone who was frazzled. He didn't. He looked very comfortable. Uh, it, he looked like sometimes he, he looked like a, like a kid, sometimes in the way, but that all that guys is all going to change. And the, you know you know how Italians are, they will mold this player into the player that they want him to be. And if he's on board, I think we're gonna have uh, something special here. But again, please manage your expectations. We always it say, good. Steve, ten games, uh, winter. We start you know at after ten at the winter break. We'll see. 
uh, where these guys are at. Uh, Liban saying, I was disappointed Adley didn't make his debut. It's a good problem to have. It's a good problem. Uh, fast and great hustle, great movement on on and off the ball. Had some good touches. Had that nice through ball to Zuri. Yes, he did. Almost found himself a goal. Um, not since Leao's debut has Stevie been this excited. Can't contain the excitement. Uh, I was there for uh, Fuji's and Funyan. Yeah, and... You see, that's two types of players, right? Yeah. You see CDK and his talent. And I'm not saying he's more mature. But it's a more groomed talent. Mm. Like, you know, where he was, uh, the team he was playing, you know, everybody was like, oh, but he plays in the in the Belgium League. How good and how good? Okay, so these talents come from somewhere. So, you know, the professionalism that at the club that he was at, he played in the Champions League. He's won a title with them. You know, Came over with the whole family. Exactly. And you compare it to something like Leao. A ton of talent. I never said Leao is not talented. He is talented, but he's wild. CDK is almost like groomed. He's like that groomed, uh, you know, a show horse that you can you can prance around with. You know, Leao is that thoroughbred that's gonna be in the Kentucky Derby. He's gonna be. He's gonna just run, just run, just run, just run. But there's talent there, Vinny, and that was the difference. You can see Leao even going from Sporting, having those issues. Then going to Lille and then making a transfer again from Lille to Italy. Imagine he went Portugal, France, Italy in a span of a year. Hmm. That's tough for a kid. And we have to remember that Leao is a kid. And I do remember that he's a kid. And it's not being negative. It's telling you guys the truth. There's a difference to those two situations. And that's why you see CDK seem more comfortable than Leao did. Slim uh, TV Simon saying, uh, Ciao Zame, Swiss German for hi, everybody. What a win last Saturday. Shake it first, but then overall convincing. Hope we keep up the good vibe. With Rebic up front, CDK, Zlatan, and Ju, we look nice up front. Also, the left side and the cam looks good for the season. Leaves us only the right wing, which is still a problem, in my opinion. Do you guys think we are make a move there or keep it like it is? Also, for the central midfield, would you go with a proven player or a young one with less experience but room to grow? I think with Adli, Benacer, Pobeg, and Tonal, we have four strong midfielders. Anyway, guys, keep up the great work. The show is getting better and better. Also, the coast-to-coast transfer was a masterpiece. Forza Milan weekly podcast and Forza Milan. I still pissed I can't make the derby. Cheers from the Swiss Ambrosini. Steve, have you seen Simon on uh, YouTube? He's Ambrosini. He's even got the the, the, the blonde hair on the side. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know if we're going to sign somebody. I When he mentioned Pobega, I saw some people on Twitter after for question on da Milan, Pobega. He's no good. Oh, Jesus Christ. After. Yeah, not after, after one game. He, well, after, he didn't. Well, honestly, he didn't really look comfortable in the position that they put him. Yeah. So uh, it's either he's not comfortable where he's playing right now or there's some grooming to do. And it's easier, you know, for someone like CDK to play up, you know, up in the field and not have some sort of defensive responsibility, even though he showed a lot of hustle. But you put Podbega there, you know, next to Ben Asser, and we were getting stretched at that point. And I know what people are talking about. It looked like he was in one of those very bad uh, senior citizen home line dancing uh, classes where, you know, the, the player from Udine really stood him up and he was back towards and he was tangled. That's not something that you want to see, especially from someone who we sent on loan to Torino to mm. to avoid that from happening. But again, game one, let's give the kid a, a break. I'm happy that Pioli gave him gave him some time. Uh, but again, we need to find out if he's comfortable in that position or if not, well, let's find him somewhere. And uh, are we signing anybody, Steve? Forget a position, anybody. <laughs> I think there's still one signing to do. I think they want to address uh, the middle of the park if someone leaves, especially. So if I know Bakayakoko uh, seems to be uh, have his plane ticket ready. So let's see if, uh, if that happens. If that happens, I think they need to address something in the middle of the park. I don't think they're going to do anything for right wing or center back, which is a little bit disappointing because I, I would like that extra push uh, for right wing. Let's see. Let's see. There's a couple of weeks left. Kim saying, hey, gents, good win for the season opener. I'm hearing rumors about the CR7 being offered to Milan. What are your thoughts? Would you take a gamble on him or be happy with what we have currently? For me, I'm happy with what we got. Uh, but please, to God, give us a fucking right wing. 
I know the rumors are out offered to Inter, to Milan, but he's been refused by Bayern Munich, all the big teams, right? And uh, they were mentioning his, you know, a salary of 24 million gross. Steve, on a serious note, would you take Ronaldo if the price was right? Let's say he comes in at seven. I would be crazy. We would be crazy not to. Milan has done this before in the past. So, like, I know where people are going. This is not the Milan of the past. But Milan uh, traditionally have taken on, you know, these, we're going to call them 40 class once they've kind of, you know, they're, they're looking at the twilight of their prime. We would be crazy not to, but the, 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 the money is just out of our budget. It's not something that we would, we, we would be willing to do. And then Ronaldo, unlike what he did at Juve, would have to check his attitude at the door. Exactly. Because, you know, Juve didn't make that a point where you are not bigger than Juve. But Milan will because he's going to be reporting to someone who he's not bigger than. Especially in the red and black colors, no one is bigger than Paolo Maldini. Exactly. Um, so we have uh, <clears throat> Vinny Mancini saying, my culture withdrawal has finally come to an end. Milan is back. What I was really happy with uh, with was the limited off-season run, uh, rust shown by the squad compared to previous season openers. Ball possession was solid, passing was strong, movement of the ball was positive. I did get a bit of a schkeffer to wool with we were scored on within uh, two minutes, but happy with the comeback. Not a question, but Diaz has a very positive game. Being a little greedy, I wouldn't mind seeing him score an actual decent-looking goal. I hated that he went to the curva and pointed at his name after his tap-in. He has no right to be doing that yet. It's not like he has been playing like a god over the last two seasons. All the guys get all these tap-ins or ugly finishes. Great for him for uh, being in the right position at the right time, but I really expect and want to see more from him moving forward. It's not really a question, just saying, um, making a point, maybe going to La Curva and uh, you know pointing at his name, it's okay. It's uh... Yeah, not really. I, I agree with that. Uh, I don't like that. I, and again... We the, the the curva knows that you're Brian Diaz. Yeah. If the, if anybody knows, it's the curva that knows. Maybe there's some other people that you know they did not know you played. But I agree with that comment where you know you want to celebrate, celebrate, and and you have the right to. You had a really rough season last year. You started off great. You're starting off great right again right now. But this entitlement from these players you know and i'm not going to compare the situation but there's a there's a video going out online where mbappe completely stops his run hmm. you know it's a kind of some sort of half a counter and you know the psg uh, uh midfielder has the, the decision to either go left or right and he decides to go right and mbappe completely stops his run at let's say the halfway the halfway line only for the play to continue and the ball is crossed to that second post where Mbappe should be. So these players, you know, in title, you're making a ton of money. You're making a ton of money playing a game that you love. So, you know, when someone says, do you really love your job? They can actually say yes. And you're acting like children. Now, I'm not saying Diaz is acting like a child. That's fine. Celebrate. It's fine. Don't point at your number. You're not. You're not Clarence Seedorf. You're not Diego Armando Maradona. You're not Lionel Messi. You're not Cristiano Ronaldo. You're Brahim Diaz. Where you know what? Let's face it, guys. Real Madrid didn't want him, so they said they sent him to us. Because if how, Real Madrid really wanted him, he would not be on our team. How about how about Rebic? Celebrating before the goal goes in. Did you see him? He's raising his hands already. It, it, people, it, people are making such a big deal about that. He's no, done I love this it. before. Yeah, I love it. And we haven't scored. So, like, he again, it's someone who was anticipating that Brian Diaz is going to knock this ball into the wide open net. So, let's not make a big story about it because he's done it already before. And, uh, you know, what did he mean by this, Steve? He wants more money. Well, what did he mean? Knows, by uh, he knows the uh, money Mayfield has done it for uh, who knows how long. And uh, look where he ended up. He went from Cleveland and now he's in, in Carolina. He, that's Baker Mayfield. He's the, or, you know, Johnny Manziel used to do something similar as well. Guys, maybe he just meant is, that his goal was money or his play maybe was his money. Maybe his goal was money. Yeah. Who knows? Let's not read too much into this stuff. And 
you know, again, someone like Rebic, you know, had a bad year. So he scores two goals. Let's take the positives out of this game, and it's game one. I'm interested to see uh, uh, see them against Atalanta. Um, and uh, I like uh, this Ryan Percy saying, hey, guys, uh, I love uh, how sharp the team is looking. The team is operating with a level of cohesion that I love to see. I had a quick question. What do you think that AC Milan is getting written off by the bookmakers and analysts? I really don't see Inter being clearly better than Milan. Is it even more laughable when Juve is thrown into the mix, in my opinion? You know what? I'm not going to talk about Juve being thrown in, because obviously from on paper you got to be thrown in. Inter clearly better than Milan. I'm going to go more why written off by bookmakers and analysts. Why do you think a, a team that has basically almost the same the same players of last year, returning champions, and were what, third, fourth by the bookmakers? So is it just because, I don't know, like I... I, I... Look, uh, the bookmakers, it's all about risk, right? And the... Uh... And besides Juve's dominance uh, for nine years, it's really hard for them to 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 give the odds-on favorite to the the champion to repeat. It, it rarely happens. It happen. It doesn't happen in a lot of other sports as well. Uh, now the bookmakers for you know football in terms of uh, European football. I don't know how they look at things. But you know, schedule is put uh, put into play. Uh, there's a factor of how many games uh, are, are you th- are, are you deep enough to uh, to compete in all three tournaments. There's a lot of factors, right? But you know, nowadays, what what is different than the olden times? The olden times, we had the pink newspaper. You would open it up and maybe see who's getting transferred, or you know, not have the pink newspaper and be able to have a, an uncle or a cousin who owned the bar with a, with a satellite that wasn't too kosher, and you would be able to see who was being transferred. Now information is made really, you know, made available on the instant. People are attracted to the big names. So, example, Inter, you know, picking up Mkhitaryan from uh, Roma, taking, on, uh, taking back Lukaku to a team that was already strong last year, the bookmakers see that, right? Uh, Juve, same thing. Uh, they see uh, the Di Maria. They see a full season of Vlaovic. But uh, oh, wow. but the soccer purists, if you if you notice, the soccer purists, even how rare they are, still see Milan in the mix because they value continuity. They value consistency. They value let's not rock the boat a bit too much. Hmm. We want to see results and we want to see, you know, someone immediately at right wing. But we sit here a continent away and, and we know we, we, we pass judgment because of what we see. But what we see is 90 minutes out of a long, long preparation, which, you know, the coach and the mister and the team are the only ones that, uh, that are going to be able to, to give us that, uh, uh, that reasoning why we're not getting a right wing and we've been saying it for two years so and again in the end do you think we were even right many we won uh, we won a scudetto last year yeah so it's you know like you said the miracle scudetto but you know i just find that uh like i can understand bookmakers and risks but it just seems that it it seems that some of them <clears throat> treat us like leicester city from years ago that uh, was a fluke and it ain't gonna happen again anyways Let's hope we make them eat their words. <clears throat> um, on the Twitter, Gigi Lapatat asking, what's the status on the pool full of jello? Let's just say that uh, by signing over uh, Coast to Coast, Fabio and uh, Stevie P are working on something that's the only details we will leave. Uh, AC Rossonero, Milan's biggest criticism was the uh, goal scoring department last season. We just scored four past the five back system that we've struggled to score one against. I love clean sheets, but would you... Would y'all prefer more goals attacking at the risk of getting scored on more? Hmm. That's a good one, Steve. I I I, I, I think sheets. clean sheets. So you you would take 30 one nothing wins over 34 to 2 wins. In the end, the win is a win. It's just for me. 
the game is keeping the ball out of, the, uh, out of your net first. If you keep the ball out of your net, you'll find a way to score. Yeah. I don't know. Like, everybody's like, it's, it's yes, in the end, you got that discussion that it is three points at the end of the day. But um, I, I think I would take. I think I would take because as long as you're not winning one goal games like you know four to three or three to two because then that you know goal differentials, but in the end points is what counts. But uh, yeah, what say you guys? Uh, more goals or uh, just clean sheets? Um, what else do we have? Uh, last question, a la destra, Steve. Guess what he's asking you? Complete the sentence. After earning our first three points, we still need a fucking right wing. But it's uh, true though. Again. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Just, I just spoke about it before. Who are we, right? But guys, you saw the goal. I think it was the second goal. Like, not only is he sleeping on offense, now he's going to start sleeping on defense. You're talking about the Messias not uh, covering. Yeah, come on. The, those are those are things that I am teaching my kids now at U9, right? Ball, you, player. Ball, you, player. Not ball, player, you. You're never going to catch him. I, I'm going to stand on... Honestly, I think Macias is not a fantastic player. Oh, my I God. Think, That's a very good take. I like I that. Think, we, we agree. We agree. I think, I think he's getting a bad... I think he's getting nitpicked because he's in the right wing position. I'm, I I said it last year, like at one point when Diaz's goal, like why was I the only one that said, but that's all Macias because he's the one that pushed. Or when he does those runs, okay, I get that we're going to concentrate more on the bad of Macias, but I think that if we never had that need, if there was nothing, this great expectations of this right wing, I don't think he will be getting nitpicked the way he is nitpicked right now. I think Macias is not a quality starting uh, 11 for a team like Milan that is going to be competing in three. But I would take him right now over a sausage maker a 100 times over. And I think he will have... I think he's going to flourish this year. That's that, That's just me. Maybe my, maybe I'm a hopeless romantic. Maybe my glass is half full. But it, it's... Um, no, yeah, Jamie, Messias is getting in the Brazil squad for World Cup. I continuously believe that Messias doned the Milan, not a starter, not substitute. Uh, I understand the economics of it. Again, I explained it already before. I think this is a, Messi a Maldini, Masara, Moncada signing where, you know, they need to put their money where their mouth is. And uh, the thing is, Vinny, as much as we want to find negative things, which is very easy to find, there's very limited good things. I will, we I will. can we can have uh, honestly uh, we can have content for negativity on Macias a good yeah, hour. Yeah, no, but uh, I, I do love uh, and the good. Cinderella stories. We can have maybe maybe five minutes. All right. Okay. And again, Juan de Scudetto, happy for him. Again, we are nitpicking, but it's an obvious area that we need to address because better teams will take advantage of that. That is very true. Um, Steve, it's time for busted tweets. I'm trying to mark all this time here so I could do these timestamps at the end so it will be easier for our viewers. Stevie P, I know that uh, Jan has sent us some uh, voice uh, clips here, so I got to go pull him up. Uh, where is he at? Where is he at? Our little friend, the correspondent. Busted tweets. All right. So, Steve, should I just uh, pull up uh, the first one and let uh, let him speak? and uh, see if he could explain uh, the, this one. So, gentlemen, our first busted uh, Calcio tweet, and I need to make sure we're like this, and the volume. Oh, yeah. All right, so Jan has given us for the first busted tweet. Play number one with Tonali leaving Serie A. Is Benacer now the best midfielder in Serie A? Now, I don't know how someone can type this without thinking that they're busted while they're typing it. First off, Sandro's not leaving for Arsenal. That would be the most ridiculous thing ever, ever for a Milanese that would play for Arsenal, first off. And secondly, you have Ben Acer being the best midfielder in Serie A and all that Tonali's gone. I'm sorry, I love Ben Acer. I love Tonali. We can't admit guys like SMS, guys. 
just like we can't be busted ourselves. It's basically what I'm saying. Let's not be busted. There's enough fan bases that are busted. Male and fans, let's not be busted. Yeah, this one was a little cringe, uh, Steve. Uh, you know, as Ben has said, the best midfielder in Serie A and with Tonali leaving to Arsenal because that was another good uh, rumor there. That uh, what, we, what we were selling him for, Steve? I don't know. 50 million. If there would be a 50 million dollar bid, we would take it right away. Yeah, that's Thanks. it. Yes, there's, there's there's busted out there for all the fan bases. Yes, this is, we're, we're aware of that and we're not shy to put our own out there, uh, for the licking. And this, this person needs to do to to understand that we will find your busted couch or tweet again in hindsight that he's serious because uh, it seems like he, he is serious with the way he's typing out this tweet and again we may be wrong we may be right <laughs> unfortunately guys it's pretty like busted. like yan said this is busted and let's not be busted ourselves you know but there's guys like sms brozovic I'm going to still say Barella. You know, there's a lot of midfielders that are much better right now and more consistent. Than it's like it's double busted saying that he's leaving for Arsenal and saying that. So not leaving and then adding Ben Asset as the best midfielder in Serie A. Funny, funny how they don't remember when Ben Asset came back from injury and he was a shadow of himself yes, for like those 10, terrible. 12 games. To exactly. Remember. He was terrible. We forgot those, right? So. Um, what do we have for slide number two? This is the tweet number two. We have the Rossi tattoo, which is bionic, like a very overrated tattoo. For so, back to the back to the tweets. He's asking how did Milan with this roster finish top four, but I ask you. How did Roma finish so many points behind Milan if the roster is so bad? Now, I know they're always going to reply with the fact that we probably, you know, cheated, which is the usual case, as we saw today. Well, not today, as we saw yesterday, when the penalty was given out. But come on. Just because you don't know certain players or you don't rate certain players does not mean that they are not good players. And that Milan wasn't a team that deservedly won the Serie A Scudetto. Did a little things go our way? Yes, sure. But in all championship squads, things go a little bit your way. You need a bit of luck with some hard work. And that's what Milan displayed. Roma finished so bad, so far behind us, barely winning anything or getting any points from top teams in the league. So I don't know what the Rossi tattoo is talking about over here. I think the real question is, is how was Roma so poor last year when they spent so much money? Steve, this 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 Roma. And by the way, you know what he tweeted back to us? Yeah. Oh my God, you're gonna make fun of me in front of your five five viewers. Oh, thank you for watching. Yeah, uh, no problem. The Rossi tattoo is again. When is this gonna end? No, when I don't this... know. But but when are the Roma fans going to understand his tweet? Okay, and this for me is the winner because it remains a mystery. It cannot remain a mystery if we did it. You have. We won the Scudetto, you ham. So what mystery is there? We not only finished top four the year before, we finished second. We then went one up. Do you know what one upping means, the Rossi tattoo? That means one year you finish second, the next year you finish first. So there's no mystery there. It's called having a plan. Unfortunately, Roma was dealt a bad hand by financial fair play having to sell off players that they could have kept and built a very nice team. I'm going to give them that much. But they have you the also flambeed the greatest Italian talent that we've seen in Serie A, Francesco Totti, for years, because your team didn't want to spend. Our team went in debt, but we won. And I don't want to take that back. You know, we suffered for 10 long years, the Rossi tattoo, before probably you were even born. I don't even know when you were born. But again, these busted tweets of, I don't know how they made it with it. Well, we did it. 
You know, them, they're complaining about that. But on the right flank, I have him in my uh, Fanta Caucho, Karsdorf, who's probably a character in Harry Potter as their right back. Schmalling, who's also another Harry Potter character. Ibanez, Mancini, the only one, Spinazzola, who had a great Euro. But we're going to see what he's going to do in a 38-man thing. So but your back line is terrible. What what makes me laugh, it, it, it's you're a Roma Twitter account, a Roma fan. Us, we're Milan, Milan fan. How many times have you seen us tweet when Inter won the Scudetto, when Juve won the Scudetto? I can't believe this. Always the team, and it, you know, it's always them. It's always... So we gave congratulations when we had to give congratulations, correct? We were pissed off that the quality of Serie A was in the shits for letting a team like uh, like Juve win uh, nine years in a row. But it's not like it, it's it, it just where did, where did these Roma fans come from, Steve? I, I know I'm this not on Twitter as much as you. Of, you know, you you sign a couple of players which they're not used to. You get the uh, the little Peter Pan on your team, and you, you know you unveil him in front of the Colosseo. Uh, where he's like some kind of Tinkerbell mi- mythological figure now. It's a long season, guys. And I don't think Roma fans understand this. It's a long season. There's a lot of things that could happen. And you're going to need a little bit of luck on your way. Yeah. So instead of concentrating on your team, you continuously go after the team who finished second two years ago and won the goddamn fucking Scudetto. I don't know what else to tell these guys. You know so yeah, have... the Rossi tattoo. I will calculate the fucking views that we have and let you know how many people saw your dumbass tweet on busted Calcio tweets. And a uh, little uh, spoiler, it's more than five. Uh, third, I think that's what he had for uh, this week. But uh, Jan, what does he have for us? When the winner for me and my books, I'm what the boys think, but piracy is killing soccer or killing culture, as the Serie A accounts put it, with the same recycled pirated image that they've used for the last four years to display their incompetence in distributing uh, international TV rights for their viewers around the world. Quite frankly, they don't care about their viewers around the world. All they care about is their viewers in Italy. And it's really embarrassing that they have to post this, post this picture at the beginning of the year to basically bring us to a conclusion that because I have to use a VPN to watch a game because you don't know how to sell your rights, I'm killing football. Not the fact that you can't clean up your stadiums, clean up the racism in the stadiums, or fix any of the other dilapidated parts of your stadiums across Italy. It's pathetic. And I think that uh, a, a tweet like that is just a cry for help for an organization that is so far up their own ass and don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to growing the game across the peninsula and outside of the peninsula, excuse me, not across the peninsula, outside of the peninsula. They don't know what the hell they're doing. So I don't think the piracy is the problem here, buddies. I think it's your ineptitude and the fact that you have geezers and dinosaurs running the FIGC, that does not help at all. This is my indigestion. This is my winner. Listen here, Seria. Piracy kills football. Hmm. But you're not going to let people like Serie B show their own highlights only 10 days after the fact, right? Don't announce, don't announce uh, that in Canada you'll be able to watch here, Serie A. We have a partner with these people here in Saudi Arabia. We have the uh, deal with this. You have no marketing whatsoever. And you want to talk to us about fucking piracy. You know what, Serie A, when you don't give me what I want, right? And you don't provide me with something of quality. Or how about my 73-year-old father? Uh, you try to make him understand that doesn't know what the internet is. That, but no, you have to have an application. Now you have to watch it from over there. So fuck you and your piracy. I will keep on streaming as much as I could possibly stream. Would it be legally? Illegally? I'm still watching your fucking commercials. But this here has to be exactly in the same kind of vein of that time that they had no to racism, and they used pictures of three monkeys, like a bunch of fucking salams that they are. This is... I don't even know of any league that would post something like this, Steve. And to me, this the Lupo Award goes to Serie A with this tweet. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, they, they, it's too bad they beat the Rossi's tattoo. He's gonna, but he's used to it. He's Romanist. He's used to losing. Uh, what kills me is the recycled image. That's that's uh, when I saw it. I was like, this is the same one that they've used. It's just really sad because not only that, they only care about Italy, Vince. That's that's the problem. You know, they're happy with the DAZN or whatever, what, whatever package they have there and whatever they're Steve, selling you know, their rights for. I, I want to uh, sorry to interrupt. You know that broadcasting companies actually take in consideration uh, illegal streaming? Well, we know we get an extra 100000 So when they sell, they take it in consideration because they know they can't stop it. Yeah. So when they deal with this kind of like publicities or commercials, they put in that money in there. They put in those those viewers. So yeah. I don't know whether, anyways, a recycled picture. Sorry, go on. So this is something that I sent to uh, to Presidente, you know, uh, just talking uh, about uh, about FUBU TV here for us in Canada. You know, it, it's great. You know, I get to watch uh, the EPL, Serie A, the French League, all in one app. Great. The thing, Vinny, is that I'm used to North American sports. I'm used to a pregame, I'm used to a, the, the halftime, and I'm used to uh, uh, end of the show recap. FUBU doesn't have that. And what pisses me off about stuff like that and what you know, Serie A needs to focus their energy on is what's happening to my views or what's happening to the content that I'm showing to people in Canada, in Australia, in China. Wherever you are, because everybody expects a certain quality. And, you know, I'm watching Serie A. It's halftime. Maybe I want to see something about Serie A. Maybe I want to see something of that happened during the Serie A, the games that I did not watch, like the highlights. Uh, you know, the old you know ride passing through the highlights with the... the, the 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 eighties or nineties uh, do disco. a little featurette, Steve Cremonese. First time, speak yeah. about Cremonese for five minutes, and don't give me that bullshit that oh it's a TV right. And me and fucking Steve will come out and do it for fucking free. You know, like like why is it? Why, look at look at uh, Youssef saying that he, he he wasn't able to subscribe to the, the before twenty four hours before the league started. But how, how do you how do you post shit like this, right? It, it just it just aggravates me to see stuff like this. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, uh, and honestly, Seria, I know you picked up your 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 Twitter game in the last couple of uh, uh, a couple of years that you know you're more in English and you're more in track. But this is this is another fucking... problem. And the guys are writing it. You know, obviously, Geo Faz and uh, and the other guys in the states, uh, CBS and the Paramount Plus. They're actually doing a very good job at. Uh, at what's happening? Uh, you know what's happening with Serie A with their uh, with their thing. The thing is that for Canada, it's always again second fiddle, right? We will not never get the attention the U.S. has because the U.S. is the super consumer. The Canadians here will, will always get, you know, we'll get what Fubu. That's for sure. We're, we're on board. We're what? But Fubu, we're talking to you now in terms of like it's time to up your game. If you look at what they're doing in the states for those viewers. But that, you know, for Serie A, for me to be watching a Serie A game and I'm at halftime and I have to watch the goals of the week from the EPL, if I'm Serie A and I sold you my rights or however they ended up in your hands and I turn on FUBU TV and I'm watching Milan Udine and at halftime I'm seeing goals from the EPL, if I'm Serie A, if I'm a businessman, I'm pissed off. Because and, I want my my user, the person who's consuming this content, to constantly be fed things of Serie A. Constantly. And, and, and the way I look at it, Steve, why don't tell me like what they're doing on Paramount Plus? We do not have Paramount Plus here. Is there another channel that is broadcasting something, right, that will conflict with Paramount Plus? No. So Fubu TV, what would it take to just buy the 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 the, the rights to distribute broadcasting this segment here until you come up with your own? Or before these EPL, what did we have? Lamar Odom, uh, who was those basketball players talk about it Terrell and it's Owens. on a loop, huh? Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens. Sorry, I don't even know these players. Thirty seconds looping and <clears throat> oh, is that stupid fucking music? Now you're asking me to go stream on the AZN Italia, doing a VPN, go Paramount Plus, and you know. Uh, BT Sports in UK and Ireland doing good jobs with pre-match previews and goals or earlier matches. Actually, Jamie, I, I've watched the BT Sports one, and I know they have a 
Uh, they have a couple of guys there too that know, know their stuff. It's just, it's just very, very uh, aggravating to see something like this because, yeah, that's definitely the first problem you want to go after, uh, Syria, because you're going to be making so many more millions of dollars to renovate those, uh, those, uh, those uh, stadiums. stadiums. Steve, I think this is our Lupo yeah, Award. Lupo, Lupo, Lupo. Award. It is time to finish off, Steve. I know you said a couple of your uh, that was my my indigestion. My Brioski is seeing WWE make it to the EPL, Antonio Conte, and to say, like, you didn't look at me when we shook hands, and you know, they're going at it. And uh, I like that, I like that he showed a bit of emotion. So, um, you know, but EPL, though, maybe maybe it was fixed, Steve, just like that slap at the Oscars. But uh, how about you? Any uh, any Brioski's? My Brioshki is a Milan weekly podcast have something to talk about other than Mercato Madness, and that's the start of Serie A. Uh, for how uh, old and dinosauric it is, it is our Serie A, it is our Calcio, we love it. We're talking about Calcio, that's my Brioshki of the week. Guys, also please go subscribe, like, retweet, share, uh, send it to your friends, subscribe to the channel. It's important to us, it helps us get out, it helps us have more than five viewers have a look at the busted cultural tweets like uh, the Roma tattoo or De Rossi's tattoo pull out on a day a day to day. Guys, support people like myself, Vinny, uh, Gio, and Fabio, content creators of Milan in English, guys. There's not that many. Uh, share it up and uh, let's go, guys. Let's uh, let's make uh, Seri- let's make our own dent in Serie. This coming Thursday, uh, the boys are going to be back at uh, 10 p.m. I'm going to try to get together with a couple of the Milan clubs uh, here, the, the Boston, New York, Toronto. Uh, Toronto had the Scudetto trophy there. Maybe Friday, maybe that. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure something out from there. But, guys, keep those notifications on. Subscribe. Your videos is Rebic, Faz, because uh, Fazi like the uh, NES Serie A. Definitely uh, Serie A on that one. Um, do we have anything closing, uh, Steve? I think that's about it. No. Atalanta on Sunday. Who's playing? Um, Inter is playing who? Hmm. Do we know? Let's wrap it up, Vinny. 125. Ovunque e sempre. Forza Milan! Ciao, guys.